All right, man, do you have problems taking notes in church, or do you think that taking notes is just for the ladies? Well, it's not just for them, and today we're going to go over six different ways you can take notes in church to make studying them easier and not leave you scratching your head like, what did the pastor just say? What's going on, guys? Matt here. Taking notes during a sermon is not just for the ladies. You men should be taking them, too, because the more tools you have when you're studying the Bible, the better you'll be at knowing every word of it. You know, taking notes can be difficult if you are a slow writer or maybe you're a beginner and you're not familiar with all the books of the Bible and where they are. You know, even long-term churchgoers can have problems with getting it all written down. And, you know, this leads me to my first tip. All right, tip number one, if your pastor talks as fast as mine does, you may have to shorthand or abbreviate. People that are OCD can have a problem with this one because it's most likely not going to be neat and perfect when you write it. Don't be afraid to abbreviate in shorthand and then go back when you're studying later that week and write them out and make them nice and neat. All right, moving on to tip number two, handwriting the notes out long form. You know, some people like me have a problem with long form notes. Like I said, my pastor gets excited and he talks fast. And another problem that I have is it's hard for me to write down those long form notes and really concentrate on what he's saying. Uh, plus, I'm a terrible speller, so I get stopped by a word and lose my place or my rhythm, and it can really just go downhill from there. Uh, if you can write fast, long form works great. You get a lot of detail, and you can go back later and study. You also have uh, less time or less mess to clean up and more time to study afterwards. Uh, and men, you don't have to go crazy and buy a fancy journal and all these different pens to write notes down with. You can just grab a $2 notebook from your local store and, and take your notes that way. All right, let's move on to tip number three. All right, this tip is probably more for the younger crowd, and my oldest seems to like this method the best, and that's taking notes on your phone, or you could use a tablet if you wanted. Uh, for Apple, I use Notes app, and what I really like about the newer Apple feature, and I even impressed my oldest by showing her how to do this, is the ability to scan text. You know, I'm able to scan text from the projector screen at the church and drop it straight into my notes. Now, it does have some uh, issues, mostly with the spacing, but you can quickly edit those out. It's really great for grabbing bullet points on the screen or just a list of books of the Bible or maybe some verses. And now for you Android users, I believe you guys have OneNote or EveryNote. Uh, any Android users out there, help me out in the comment sections. What do you guys use? Another feature that I really like about this scan text is that you can actually even just take a picture of the uh, projector screen and then later on when you're fixing your notes, you can actually go in there and scan the text that's on the picture and drop it straight into your notes app. All right, moving on, tip number four, talk to text apps. You know, some churches have pastor's sermon notes available, but if yours does not and you want to have a full sermon written down, you can use a talk to text app. Uh, I've tried a few over the past few weeks and none really have worked great. Uh, all have been free, and I'm sure if you had the paid version, it, it might be a little bit better. But here's a sample of the Google Documents voice dictation, which is really awesome, but it did not keep up with my pastor's voice. He speaks through a mic and it's pretty amplified, but as you can see here, it did not do a great job. So another app that I tried was Dictation. I tried it in a small group, but the teacher really wasn't loud enough for it to pick up very well. He didn't have a mic on. He was just uh, speaking maybe 20 feet from me, but I don't think these apps were really meant for that. The Dictation app, I realized after, I guess, it was a one-time freebie, and then you have to pay monthly for it. Uh, if you guys use any voice-to-text apps for church, leave a comment down below on what you use and what works best for you. All right, tip number five, using your phone's voice recorder. Again, I use Apple, so I use the app Voice Memo, and it works really well, and it picks up the speaker great. You know, I can set this to record and not have to worry if I miss what the pastor says. I can come back home, and I can listen to it later, or I can listen to it while I'm driving, or even during the week when I'm having my quiet time. And then I can fix, and I can study my notes uh, by using the Voice Memo. All right, so one thing I did figure out is that while using Voice Memo, you cannot use Voice Memo and the Dictation app or Google Documents Voice Dictation at the same time. Uh, what would happen is I would turn on Voice Memo, start it recording, and then I'd switch to Google Documents Voice Dictation, and the Voice mem Memo would just stop recording. I assume they're probably competing for the microphone on the phone. Uh, I would only have about 30 seconds of Voice Memo, and then the Google Docs Dictation would pick up after that. Uh, for me, voice memo seemed to work the best, and it was the best method of capturing all the pastor says. I want you guys to try it out and let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment down below. All right, guys, hang around to the end after this last tip for a bonus. This is tip number six, and this is the one that I use to take sermon notes. I use a combination of shorthand bullets in my Bible and the voice memo on the phone to record the entire sermon. 
I really like shorthand bullets in my Bible because when I go through it at any time, whether I'm teaching or I'm studying it, you know, I really have an instant reminder of the passage's meanings, uh, maybe some little notes, and even cross-references right next to a verse. It's like really having a study Bible on steroids. You know, sometimes you may not even have the notes binder that you've taken notes in uh, during the sermon, or you may have filled one up and moved on to another, but you're always going to have the notes in your Bible or the bullets in your Bible uh, as long as you own that Bible. You know, I also use the voice recorder, uh, the voice memo app on my phone, uh, and if I have any questions about a part of the sermon or if I've missed something, I can always go back and use that voice memo to study the passages that the pastor explained, especially the ones that are difficult to understand uh, any of the meanings of. All right, if you guys are still here, thank you for watching till the end and you have reached the bonus tip. Uh, check to see if your church has an archive of past sermons or if your church even offers maybe a transcript of the pastor's sermon. I'm very fortunate to have a church that archives the sermons where I can go back and watch them at any time that I want to. Uh, they also post the transcripts on a Google Drive for anyone to download off the website. Uh, the only downside to using transcripts, at least for my church to study by, is that sometimes they can get behind on posting those maybe a week or two, uh, so be cognizant of that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed these tips on sermon notes. And if you have a certain way you take notes and I didn't mention it, please leave it in the comment below to help the community out. I love you guys and I hope you have a great week. Remember, live those weights and grow that faith.